Well, let us turn our Bibles into 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4. Even I brought these three, I can say, because my, my translations say, jar, container, and some Bibles just say the jars, but my one it speaks about the jars and the containers as well. So I have got three, uh, two big ones, brown color and a small one like a silver color. All right. Second uh, Kings chapter 4, from the verse number 5, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, let me just double check. Yeah. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. I was talking about that last week. Do you still remember? To shut the door, to close the door. What is the meaning even Jesus was saying about that? Shut the door and close the door behind you. And you go and pray unto me. When the, the Lord God was saying, Jesus, exactly Jesus was saying, shut the door or close the door. is because if you leave the door open, that is our ears. We will be receiving so many, so many good advices and people's opinions. And sometimes people, they are not... Living in faith as you are. They are not walking in faith as you should. And that they will say things that they are not supposed to. If you are not strong or if you are not stable spiritually, you will be absorbing all those kind of opinions and those opinions will kick you out of God's advices and plans. So this lady, she was in debt, and she had no idea what was supposed to be done to solve the problem. And then she saw that the man that came to her house knocking at the door and told her, I need the money back, your husband. He, sh he was supposed to pay, but now he's gone. And then she said, I have got no money in. And then the man told her, I will take your children as part of the debt. In that specific moment, the scriptures say that she ran to the man of God. What do you do when you have troubles? Some people, they run to friends. Some people, they go to the bar. Some people, they go to the club. Some people, they go to casino. Because they want to entertain their minds. They want to get some fresh air. Especially when the people, they are facing uh, marriage issues. Wives and husbands, they are not okay. And then some people, they need some fresh air. And they go to places that they will never ever find comfort they will never get solution they will never get the right advices that will change their situations but the scriptures say this lady she went to the man of God and out out of debt when she told the man of God I am in trouble and I have got debt the man of God, he could see solution. That is quite good when we as a Christian, we challenge ourselves to walk not by sight, but to walk what? Come on church. To walk by faith. Because when you walk by sight, when you walk by what you see, you may see all the time wrong things, as Mama, she's saying, and you will never be able to see what solution. But when do we walk 
by faith. Faith gives you the vision to see beyond troubles. Faith gives you the vision to see beyond the line. Faith gives you the power to see the unseen. And then will keep yourself strong and help you to keep on what? Moving forward. When she came to the man of God, she told the man of God, I am in debt. And the man of God made a question, and that question for me is the most important question. He made the question, what do you have in your house? The same question I can bring to myself this morning, I can bring unto you as well. Whatever your case may be, whatever your struggles may be, Whatever is the inside of your mind, eating your energy, the question is, what do you have in your house? I'm not talking about the physical house. Some of you stay in Bishop Lavers, Elsie's, Belleville, and so forth. Forget about your physical house or home. What do you have in your mind? According to your situation, what do you have in you? Some people, they say, I am distressed. I am hopeless. I am angry. What happened to me? Pastor, that is my brother, is my sister. They are not supposed to do what they did. I am angry. I am full of anguish. Or I am depressed. I am faithless. There is no faith in me. The man of God made a question, what do you have? And she said, your servant has nothing except a little quantity of olive oil. Everyone say with me, olive oil. Olive oil. Say again, olive oil. olive oil. When the man of God heard from her, I have olive oil in this small quantity. You know what he saw? He saw solution. Everyone say with me, solution. <laughs> Learn, brothers and sisters, to see solution out of troubles. That's why the scripture teaches us, let us walk by faith, not by sight. When she said, I have a little quantity of oil, he was thinking with himself, I see great opportunity of transformation. You don't need to have a big faith. You don't need to say, I am a specialist. You know I am so smart. I am very intelligent. Pastor Santos, you don't know me. I am this, I am that. You don't need to have a big faith. If your faith, as the Bible say, is as small as the mustard seed, that will be enough for you to solve out your problems, for you to see solution. And then coming to the scripture, coming to the Bible, please, let us see with me in the mighty name of Jesus. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought uh, the jars to her, and she kept what? Pouring. Pouring. She was giving. The little that she had, she was what? Giving. Say with me, I am a giver. <laughs> Say, I am a giver. <laughs> and I am a giver. <laughs> but to speak with confidence. <laughs> we should be the givers. As I was speaking last Sunday, give your time to the kingdom of God. Give your abilities to the kingdom of God, my brother, my sister. Give your talents toward the kingdom of God. Not expecting God to repay you. Not expecting God to come and give you doubles. But to give unto Jesus. 
Surrender unto Jesus. Give yourself completely unto the kingdom of God. There is a scripture that I love so much. In the book of Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 36. That is one of my favorite ones. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 36. Let us check together what the scriptures say in this special one. Chapter 10, verse number 36. Let us see. You need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will what? Receive what he has promised. The scriptures say you need to persevere. After done the will of God, that's why I say, look at me now. Give yourself completely. Give yourselves unto God and persevere in giving yourself because can I tell you our flashes will lie to us all the time I was speaking Friday here morning in the service and I made a simple question that it sometimes happens even to myself I have to say brother brother Rog I am the first one that I can confess about that. Sometimes, I know that is the day to go to church. We have got responsibilities. We have things to, uh, to do in church. But the moment I say to myself, Thank you, Father. You gave me one more beautiful night. And I open my eyes. And I know that I am breathing. My flesh will tell me, God will understand you. You don't need to go to church today. You don't need to go there today because God, He knows you and He understands you. One day, it's just one day, God will never count on it. Did it happen to you? It happens to me many times. But I took a decision long ago to do not obey my flesh. But to obey the Spirit of God in me. And I know I am committed to the kingdom of God. And I made a promise to God to keep on giving, donating my life unto the kingdom of God. So the scriptures say that this lady, she kept on pouring. She was giving the little oil. Everyone say with me, little. It's just a little. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, the little things that you do out of passion, God will bring the rewards. The little things you do out of passion, giving to the kingdom of God, God will come through for you as well. There are so many people suffering. Because they don't look at others. They want to look after themselves only. They don't want to bless others. They want to receive the blessings only to themselves. Looks like some people, they have been forgetting what God told Abraham. And we are Abraham's children, according to the scripture. Abraham is my father in faith. The Bible say that we are all Abraham's children. And God told Abraham, whoever blesses you, I will bless. And whoever curses you shall be cursed. And God was saying, I will make you a blessing. And the blessing is to bless others. God didn't say, Abraham, I am blessing you. But God said, I am making you a blessing to a thousand generations. So if you are Abraham's children, follow your daddy examples. Follow Abraham's example. Bless others in the name of Jesus. Not necessarily with money. 
Because if you bless some people with money, they will be always expecting you to put your hands in your pocket and give something to them. Some people, they like to, you know, to compliment you and to greet you so kindly because they know something will come out of your pocket. <laughs> but bless them not with money, but bless them with words that will lift them up. Bless them with the words that you will be, you know, encouraging them on a daily basis. Bless others, praying, fasting, and motivating them, and telling them it is possible. You can turn around the situation. God will change your marriage. God can heal you. God can prosper you. You are smart. You are full of talent. You can overcome. Bless others. But some people, they are a blessing, but they don't open their mouths to bless others. Tell your neighbor, I bless you, my brother, I bless you, my sister. And the scriptures say, verse number 6, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 6. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is no more jar left. The moment the son told her, mommy, there is no more jar left, the scriptures say, the oil is stopped flowing. The oil stopped flowing. The moment the jar were gone, the oil stopped. Look what the scriptures say, Malachi chapter 3. Can you turn your Bibles, please, into Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. When the scriptures say, bring the whole tithe into the house of God. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. Let us see it together. Did you get it? Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Look at me now, please, and... Remove the scripture now to everyone, whoever is at the back to look at the screen. Bring the whole tithe. It just doesn't matter how much it may be. If someone comes to give you like a hundred rents, how much you should tithe? Ten rents. It's just too little. It's just a ten rents. Don't eat that small seed. Tithe into God's kingdom. That is a little seed, a small seed, my brother, but give that into God's kingdom. Someone came and blessed you, gave you little, but so little, it just doesn't matter. Bless the kingdom of God, giving the little into God's hands, on God's hands. And then the scriptures say, uh, Bring the holy tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see, look at that now, the promise of God. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much what? That there may be no room enough to store it this is what happened to the lady the lady she gave the little oil that she had she was pouring the little oil that she had inside of those jars and they came to the point that she had no more room to be what receiving when do you give the scripture say you shall receive Turn your Bibles now into 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, from the verse number 6. That is lovely scripture. That say, remember this. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. Remember this. Whoever sows, oh, that is beautiful. Whoever sows, or through my one, say, remember this, a farmer. Who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously 
will get a big crop. Verse number 7. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. The decision comes from you. How much you shall give. Some of you, you can donate yourself and say, Pastor Santos, I am a good speaker. Let me donate myself. Can I join the group that goes to the hospital? And to speak to the sick ones dying in hospital. Pastor Santos, I am a very good person, you know, to get along with others, to be talking, to make friendship. Can I take some flyers of the church with another one or two, three brothers, sisters with me and go door by door evangelizing, telling others about the kingdom of God? You are the one to decide how much you shall give. You are the one to administrate your time. And don't say, I have got no time. You, you do have time. Because after the service, you are going home to eat. And then you say, Sunday is the resting time. But really, you will not be resting. You will be watching TV. You will be talking with other people through Zap Zap. You will be watching people's lives as a busybody person. TikTok, Facebook, whatever. Tell me if I am lying. Call me as a liar. You have got time for. It's all about say, I don't want to give so much of my life. I don't want to donate so much time of my life. So the scriptures say, every each one of you must decide in which you're going to work and how much time you are going to donate. Even the ashes. When we finish the service, I have seen from here, some of the ashes, the workers... When we say goodbye, people of God, they take their bags and they go in between the crowd. They just leave the church. They don't want to take care of God's house. To fix things before they go home. Can you imagine if God will deal with you in the same way? I will not fix your life. I will not put things in order. I am just leaving you in trouble as you are leaving my house. Think about that. Give your time. I know why sometimes you are cross. You have a right to be. Because sometimes your husband is not playing in the right way that he should play. But it's all about to decide how much are you going to give. Your time to fix your marriage and to fix your situation. Give your time. Tell your neighbor, you must become a good giver. Sometimes we don't like to listen to the poor. We don't like to give ears and attention to the lower person. We like to sit around and to be, you know, together with people that they have something to offer, to give. But we need to understand that it's quite important to listen as well to others. Because sometimes people, they will be used by God. God will be using them to advise you in the right way. I will never forget about that. Never ever, even Sister Santos, my wife, she was talking about that. A pastor and together with his wife, they were crying unto God for many years. And his wife, she used to be depressed because she used to look around and see many kids in church. Everyone saying, this is my child, this is my son, this is my daughter. And she used to look at herself 
and uh, bring some questions. Am I a sinner? What am I doing? Because God is not looking at me. I have got no child. And then one day, after praying for so many years, the pastor was in church. And the advice he gave to the ashes was simple like this. When you see a scholar, a, the person that is outside, homeless person, is smelling so bad, don't allow them to come and sit among people. Keep them at the back. That was the advice. And either myself, I should say the same. Can you imagine if we allow the person to come now as I am preaching? I am trying to bring you some understanding. And someone will come from outside, walking in a funny way. Everybody will start looking at that person. What the pastor was saying wasn't wrong. But in that day, one man from outside, you know he was carrying like some bags full of stuff. He was smelling so bad. He was dirty, completely dirty. And he stood inside of the church. Then he came walking. And the two pastors, they tried to stop the man at the back. But the pastor could you see, and the pastor said, Hey, as a belief, leave this poor man. Allow him to come and to sit here next to me. When the man came, the man was seated as the pastor was conducting the, the meeting, preaching, speaking. And the pastor came to the conclusion of the meeting. And then the man came and he was queuing, waiting for the pastor to lay hand on him and do a prayer. The moment he said, can you please, sir, as a belief, pray over me. What do you need? Just pray over me. And then he closed his eyes and the pastor laid a hand on him and he was praying. The moment the pastor was praying over that man, he was laying hand on that poor man, that man, the homeless one, or the scholar, whatever it may be, he could see in that specific moment a little baby, beautiful baby, he was lying flat on a big plate. After that, his wife, she became pregnant. And after nine or ten months, the baby came through. So sometimes you don't listen. You don't give attention to those who are in the lower position. And they are the ones, they are bringing a message to you. Because you think you are well educated, you are so smart, you are driving like a vehicle, you have got some money in your bank account, and you don't care about them. But they are the ones that maybe God is using them just to see what you have in your heart. How many times you despise those kind of people? How many times you didn't even look at them? How many times... You even you swear at them. Oh, my brothers and sisters, today is the morning that you should repent and say, Yes, pastor, you were talking to me. That happened to me so many times. So that's why I am saying to you this morning, decide, my brothers and sisters, how much you are going to give. And tell your neighbor, and challenge your neighbor, let us shake our neighbors this morning, and say to the person next to you, give everything. Amen. Give your all to Jesus. Hey, come on, give your all to Jesus. Some people can give, but they, you know, they took a decision to stand in the position as a lazy person. Give your time. Give your intelligence, give your talents, give it to Jesus, and He will come to reward you. Say hallelujah. Coming back to the scripture that say, you must eat, decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. 
For God loves a person who gives in which way? Cheerfully. Verse number 8. And God will generously provide all you, all you need. I was talking Friday as well about Brother David. Brother David, my son, I believe one day he should testify into details. Into details. What God did to him when he left South Africa eight, eight years ago going to America to study. You know, that was part of my, I can say, my donations into God's kingdom. Because the Bible says, the generation of the men of God, the men and the women that listen and hear God's voice, his generation will be might in the land. You may not see results today, sister. You may not see, brother, the results today by what you have done. But the results will come in your next generation. You may not have it today. But God is faithful. And on the right time, on the right season, your next generation, they will be receiving what you have done today. The seeds you are planting, the seeds you are sowing, don't stress yourself. They are growing. They will grow. They will become a tree. And they will give fruits. They will be bearing fruits. And then when I left my country, going to India, not knowing what was about to happen to us on that side, I gave my time, I gave everything I had. I had in that specific moment, she knows, Rodrigo, he doesn't know, he was just a little baby. But she's the one, she's looking at me and she knows what, I, what I'm saying. Out of hard work, I was laboring for many years and I bought two a small pieces of land. And then I was thinking about my future here. I will be building our house. I will be preparing our future. And then when I was about to go to India, not knowing how long I was supposed to be there, I took one pastor of mine. I, I can put in this way, I gave as a gift. I took all the furniture. I called pastors, friends of mine. I said, take this one for you. Take this one. You can take it home. 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 Not expecting them to pay me anything. I gave everything. And then we went to India. And these boys, they suffered and they paid the price. And because of the English communication, David, Daniel, and Rodrigo, they were so angry and upset. Especially David and Daniel. Because they could not speak English. And when we got there, they put them behind like three or four grades by the school. But they were so upset. They couldn't speak and they said, the ministry is not mine, daddy. Look what they are doing against us. Oh, I am here in this nation, in this country. People, they see what they are doing and so forth. I say, zip up, brothers. Because God is faithful. One day God will come through. And after two, three years, everything was okay. And then now when we came to South Africa, after many years, David, he left us and he went to America to study. He was studying in America. He got the full scholarship. He didn't pay his ticket to leave South Africa. He didn't pay to study there in America. He was in Texas. He was even studying and he was getting paid. And then listen to this now. Listen to this now. David was far from his daddy. Far away from his parent. And I don't know how it happened. But the owner of the big university, the big school, the big, let me say, university in America. He used to take David Saturday. Just to go on the sea 
on his boat. I don't know how it happened. How David got in contact with the big men then in America. I really, I do not know. But Saturdays, some Saturdays, one and off, he used to take David to go there by the school to drive David to the sea and just to go just for, you know, just for some refreshment. And David was playing the keyboard in one church that was quite far from the place where he was studying. He was playing the keyboard. You know what? The pastor just felt in his heart and said, David, I have in my garage, it's just a seated there, a spare car. You can have this key and you can drive. And the weekly, I forgot that. Weekly, he used to give money to David just to go to the garage and to fill up the tank. Everything that I did a couple of years ago, and they had to follow me, going with me, God came through. Amen. And can I tell you, these blessings keeps on flowing. It will never stop. It will only stop when I am no longer willing to prepare what jars and containers in my mind and in my heart to the olive oil to keep on flowing. The moment I close my mind, the moment I close my heart, the moment I say, I don't want to obey, I don't want to serve God, I don't want to do anything else to the kingdom of God, the oil will stop. But as long as I am willing to say, let me keep myself obedient, the blessings will keep what? Flowing. Be a giver, my brother. Don't stop in and on giving. Give and you shall receive. Say amen. amen. This lady, she had to donate the little oil that she had. But remember, she was in debt. Especially when the person say, I have a little. Hey, my time is too tight, pastor. Can I tell you? Is squeeze yourself and find time to serve God. Is squeeze yourself in your schedule and find time to put yourself available to God to use you. Never say, no, it's too difficult for me. No, I have so many things to do. That's why things, they are going so difficult to you. Because you are the one responsible to say the oil must stop. But the moment you prepare the containers here in your mind, heart, in your spirit, you know, to receive the oil, the oil will keep what? Flowing, flowing, and flowing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Am I, am I talking the way that is quite difficult for you to understand or not? Give your time. Give yourself. Now we are coming now to the last Sunday of this month. Not the following Sunday, but the last Sunday. We have two Sundays ahead. You start preparing yourself to invite one of your friends. Somebody that is suffering. Not a Christian. Don't take Christians out of their church. Leave them there. Bring those who are in trouble. Those who are in darkness. Invite them Bring them, because if you give your time to speak, to motivate them, and bring them, God will never forget about you, because God is faithful. Amen? Say, I am a giver. Give a clap hand to the Lord, please. Bonjour. Merci, Naninge, O Sangana Biso Aalelo. Nazar on Dimake, Zambarolo Belayo. O Kokikola na message Oyo, na Nenge Bele, spécialement na YouTube channel na Biso. Kobo Sanate, ko like, Kobo Sanate ko s'inscrit, Kobo Sanate ko share. 
kujoeni biso na ba social media na biso soki on go so na pasteur na biso moko ya église kende na site na biso otinde na biso message pasteur ba pasteur na biso ba koza na te na ko répondre yo na na moment ona toza famille na zone di makero mona o lisusu awa semaine za ko ya nzamba pambola bino